Now let us um, shift to talk about uh, uh, an important um, area uh, 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 in the anterior medial aspect of the uh, thigh. This area, this is triangular area known as femoral triangle. This is very important area, especially clinically, because it contains um, uh, and access or a blood vessels that can be accessed for different kind of treatments. So you we will define that area. So femoral triangle is a depressed area as you see here that shaded in the uh, green color up here and it's located just you know the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament as you know and the triangular area that just below the inguinal ligament in the anterior medial aspect of the thigh is known as triangular uh, femoral triangle so uh, the this is the area in general but let us dig deep in that and define its borders so it boundaries guys as i mentioned superiorly by the inguinal ligament as you see that extends from anterior superior spine to the pubic tubercle and laterally we have the sartorius muscle this is the sartorius muscle of course and medially you see here is just in the background is the adductor longus muscle so this is the adductor longus muscle so this area is the femoral triangle so there is an easy way to remember uh, the names of uh, boundaries there so they are abbreviated in sale because the um, the femoral triangle is really like uh, a sail so we can uh, you know remember that as related to the sartorius and a related to the adductor longus and il related to the inguinal ligament so let us uh what's yes these are the borders of the uh femoral triangle but about, about the floor of it look at the shadow there so what you have here you remember the iliacus muscle and psoas we call it eu psoas muscle two sisters right in certain lesser trochanter so here is in the background you can see their muscle the muscle fiber of iliacus and um psoas major the edio psoas muscle this is number one and later medial to it you have the pectineus uh, muscle this is a little muscle the big tenius muscle that you know attached to the uh, pubis superior pubis and instead of the big tenial line and medial to it you have the adductor uh, longus muscle so these uh, muscles form the floor of the femoral triangle so after we define the borders and the floor let us understand or let us define or enumerate what's the um, structure is related there which is the most important thing here so what's the contents of femoral triangle yes you can see here from lateral to medial although i prefer always to mention from medial to lateral so from medial here you have the you have the uh, deep inguinal lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels as you see here in a green color so you have one right and lateral to it you have the uh, femoral vein and uh, its uh, proximal tributaries including the saphenous uh, great saphenous vein lateral to it you have femoral artery and of course there are a couple of branches not shown here lateral to it there is a femoral nerve so you have lymph node and lymphatics vein artery nerve then but remember uh, this is from medial to lateral that means more medially is the vein lateral to it is the artery lateral to it is the nerve femoral vein artery and nerve very simple now 
what I want to say here that the importance of defining the area and know where is that is some time to get an access there and to um, for different treatments and most importantly here is the femoral artery right this is the femoral artery how can I uh, exactly palpate the femoral artery well it's very simple you know the border between the or part of the abdomen and the thigh when especially when it's flexed you can see or locate the location of inguinal ligament because especially if you define the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle but from anterior superior iliac spine it has extended to the symphysis pubis here so the midway the midway is the location of the femoral artery you have to you have to feel the pulsation it's like um, it's different than the femoral vein because there is really um, uh, a pulse here that you can feel it you can palpate it right so very simple you know the anterior superior spine and symphysis pubis in the middle here so the midway in between is the location of femoral artery now um, but these uh, structures most of them are encircled and uh, uh, um, uh, covered by a fascia, enveloped by a fascia, a sheath. This sheath known as femoral sheath, right? It's known as a femoral sheath. As you see here, the femoral sheath um, encircles and wrap like the lymphatics, vein, and artery, femoral vein, I mean, and femoral artery, but not the nerve not the femoral nerve right so the femoral nerve is not in sheathed not covered by a femoral sheath anyway so this sheath uh, uh, the anterior border of this sheath as you see here is continuation or continued up with the transversalis fascia the fascia of the abdomen let me show you here so you know you remember i think from the previous semester the layers of the abdomen and most you know deeply you have the uh, fascia transversalis which is before the extra peritoneal fat and peritoneum right this is continued as you see here down this is the femoral uh, sheath as you see here so the anterior part of the sheath femoral sheath continued with superiorly with the fascia transversalis but the posterior one continues with the uh, fascia of the uh, ilium we call it fascia iliaca so the here is the posterior one that continues with the uh, iliaca fascia now let me raise these things okay uh, now this sheath um, you know as I mentioned surrounded the femoral vessels I mean femoral vein and femoral artery and lymphatics but not the nerve and it's about you know say 2.5 uh, centimeters below the inguinal um, ligament now uh, yes we mentioned that and now let us dig deep in that sheath look at it here with the green color and just the uh, deep to it you have a like a white color the white color is the femoral sheath right this one the white color is the femoral sheath and it sends like septa between the femoral artery and another one between femoral artery and femoral vein and between femoral vein and the femoral canal here for lymphatics um, so the so you by this way when you say this is laterally and this is as you know medially so you have three compartments lateral compartment intermediate compartment and medial compartment the medial compartment which uh, 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 constitutes of femoral 
canal that contains lymphatics the intermediate has femoral vein and the lateral compartment has femoral artery now um, the femoral nerve as you see here laterally is out of the game that means it's not encircled not in sheathed with a femoral sheath not covered by femoral sheath so it's out right which is important and usually is a trick in the exams mcqs so yes let us now we already mentioned these things and you see the compartments now what's the story of the medial compartment that contains we call it femoral canal we call it we give it a name femoral canal in which it contains one deep inguinal lymph node and um, efferent lymphatic vessels it's short about 1.5 centimeter and uh, this canal as i mentioned contained um the deep inguinal lymph node and efferent lymphatic vessels and fatty connective uh, tissue so this femoral canal as you see here has the upper opening here right or the upper end and the upper end of it we call it femoral ring yes this is the canal it's okay but the upper end of the canal is called femoral femoral ring so the femoral ring has uh, relations what the relation of the femoral ring and i will tell you why we are really curious about about this ring because there is a herniation there a femoral hernia femoral hernia part of small intestine can lodged in this canal because this is the weakest part so anyway the femoral ring the the borders of the femoral ring anteriorly as you see here you have the inguinal ligament yes this is the sorry this is the inguinal ligament yes anteriorly and you have posteriorly the superior ramus of pubis bone medially you have the lacunar ligament a continuation of inguinal ligament the lacunar ligament as you see here let me erase it okay this is the this is the lacunar ligament medial to it and laterally you have the femoral um, vein and the septum this is the septum and this is the femoral vein so one thing else that your femoral um the femoral canal the lower end of femoral canal is like fused with the femoral adventitia of um adventitia of the femoral vein which is like give it a kind of extra strength or in order to decrease the opening and the weakness and the gap there right so which is a close of course to the saphenous opening we talked about this opening previously in the previous lecture um sorry in this lecture but um in the previous slides i mean so um part uh, as i mentioned of the femoral sheath um that form this canal is not adherent to the wall of small because we mentioned i don't know if we mentioned that or not you know that this is the femoral artery this is the femoral vein and the femoral sheath that encircles these vessels indeed it adheres to the external surface of those vessels make there is no um, gap for any um, peritoneal contents to leak there but unfortunately medially in the femoral ring here the the sheath the femoral sheath is not adhere to the lymphatic vessels inside it that means it's like loose structure there and there is a gap that permits as you see here loops from the intestine to be passed through it and lodged there this is the femoral hernia this is the femoral hernia you know now why we talked in details about all these things 
Yes, because the intestine can um, move like and it can be like a small bulge, but it can be filled more and more when the lube of intestine exit also the saphenous opening and when it bulged outside and it can like a bulge or a mass on the anterior aspect of the thigh. Show you why we um, uh, give it like extra focus on uh, femoral sheath and especially the femoral canal. Look at it here. Um, if you want to dig deep in the um, hernia, you can watch the um, uh, a lecture about the anterior abdominal wall so that there is uh, much of details there. But let me remind you this is the inguinal uh, ligament, and we mentioned that there is a femoral sheath here in which there is a femoral artery, femoral vein, and there is a femoral, I'll say like this, the femoral um, canal. So in this canal, you know, there is lymphatic and this is the weakest area and in which there is loops of intestine can pass through this weak area. Look at the neck of the herniated sac. Let me erase these things. So the neck of the herniated sac, once it's located at the first below the inguinal, the level of inguinal ligament, so you remember the femoral sheath, then, oh yes, it's, um, you will say, it's inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle. If it's inferior and lateral to pubic tubercle, it's femoral hernia. But if the neck of the sac, uh, um, it's above and medial to the pubic tubercle, above and medial, the opposite I mean, above and medial, it's the inguinal hernia. However, the femoral hernia, it looks like at the first small because the sac is inserted inside the femoral canal. But once it's passed down and bulges from the saphenous opening that's located there, it becomes like more prominent like in this case, right? So again, here is what I mentioned about the neck of the sac. Once it's yes, inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle, it's femoral hernia. But once above and medial uh, pubic or to the pubic tubercle, it's the inguinal hernia. So um, here is guys uh, uh, another example. I'll show you the. Uh, uh, inguinal hernia, I was polished and can extend to the scrotum, right? And here is the femoral hernia below the inguinal uh, ligament, right? As uh, the neck of the sac, below, if it says pubic, say pubic tubercle, it's um, below and lateral. So this is the femoral hernia. It is an example of femoral hernia. This is, look at it here. Uh, I was bulged, of course, in the um, uh, in the femoral canal, this loop of uh, intestine, right? And this is femoral hernia here. Look at this, this is a testis, right? 